Okay, so I went ahead and did a little bit more digging online, and I found um, one poster's comment on, I think it's like the Cadillac LaSalle um, forum website thing online. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but pretty much, I don't think it's actually the horn pad itself, um, although I did fix that. My dad actually helped me. We went ahead and popped the, well, I popped the rivets off. Um, and then used a little bit of um, a sealant. Some people had suggested maybe just redoing the foam and cutting it out in the same pattern as the foam that's already behind the foam pad um, of the horn um, kind of push thing, the horn pad, I guess. Um, I just went ahead and used sealant to kind of beef up that padding, um, separating um, the kind of the, the contact and the copper with the um, uh, the backing of the horn pad itself, which it grounds out on, which I'll go ahead and kind of show you guys right now with some photos, kind of what I did um, with, you know, the, the pad, kind of the pieces taken out, and then where I put the sealant to beef it up and make it a little bit thicker, so that way when you press on that horn pad, um, it has more of a distance that you need to push in without it actually making a contact, just in kind of um, a normal uh, steady state. Um, but anyhow, looking at the online forums, what I figured out was that my car is actually missing what's in here. I believe it's missing this. Um, this actually, I got it from Eckler's Corvette online, and it got here really quickly, so that's really nice. Um, but it is actually a horn contact insulator, and where I was showing you guys earlier, um, where the little, the, the contact spring for the horn circuitry and the steering wheel and steering column goes, uh, where it touches those three metal contacts, um, kind of at the base of where the steering wheel goes on onto the steering column. I think it's actually grounding out right at that particular spot. Um, when I'm putting the spring there, it's actually, I think it might be slightly touching the um, steering column, the center shaft coming up the steering column. Um, so I'm thinking if I go ahead and install this thing, this is actually made for a Corvette of the same time period-ish. Uh, but it should work. Uh, I didn't really find any parts for a Cadillac Eldorado because there's not that many of those compared to like older uh, Corvettes being restored. Um, but anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and install this guy and hopefully it works. Let's go ahead and take a look at it first. So yeah, here's the horn contact insulator and it looks pretty simple. It's just plastic and it's going to go ahead and slide right over onto our steering column with the steering wheel removed. Um, and it should then uh, go ahead and the spring will kind of sit around the outer edge of that and it'll still contact those metal, uh, those three metal points there, um, like it should, but it will just go ahead and kind of be a little barrier between the spring contact and the actual steering column. So I think we go ahead and go out to the car and install this guy, and let's see, keep our fingers crossed, um, that it kind of fixes this issue and I can just move on to another project. Okay, so we're back out in the car, and you can kind of see right here, there is the horn insulator clip. Uh, in position, so it's back here, it's this black guy right here, and you can see it going all the way around, and um, you can kind of see all of these three um, contact points for the spring that um, carries the current for the horn. Uh, those are still completely um, accessible, uh, but this little clip here, the black insulator thing, is completely blocking the uh, metal part of the column. So when I put the steering wheel back on, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this that well, it on. Uh, let's see. Gonna, can you guys kind of see in there? Like so. I don't, eh, you guys really can't see it. But the point is, is that the spring, let me get this off without breaking it. This is hard one-handed, you know. Okay, and let's go. But yeah, so the insulator is there, um, leaving all those access points, those contact points completely open for the spring to touch, but it's blocking the actual metal of the column, so that way when you kind of retract the telescopic part of the column in, and that uh, spring kind of contracts a little bit, um, it's not grounding out on here at all and making your horn sound. Um, and you might be wondering, hmm, this hole on this little uh, insulator there is quite a bit smaller than this thing. This thing, I had to figure this out on my own, um, actually works when you go ahead and telescope your string wheel in, like so. Notice that it's bumping all the way back now. Do you kind of see that? Um, so that is kind of keeping your uh, column, when you telescope it back in, uh, from actually hitting the side, because you know how that sleeve on the steering wheel kind of comes over the side here. Um, if you didn't have this guy back there, uh, it would actually telescope in so far that it would start hitting this thing, because uh, I originally um, had that actually just removed um, when I put uh, the new uh, insulator on, and I was like, you know, maybe I don't even need this. 
Um, so I went ahead and left it off and it's kind of hooked up the steering wheel and it turns out that uh, it started to hit this, believe it or not. Uh, so I went ahead and put it back on. This was on really tight. But yeah, this thing is pretty much a really thick metal like O-ring, uh, about that thick, about that thick, um, with a metal band around it kind of clasping it on. It's a solid metal band. Uh, so what I did was I kind of, you can kind of see it more mutilated on this side than on this side, but I just took um, a little flathead screwdriver. I'm sure someone that actually knows what they're doing can do this better, but I I went ahead and shoved the screwdriver in and pretty much just kind of pried on this thing to help kind of open up this metal clasping uh, ring thing uh, so that way I could slide this thing off um, which it did take some elbow grease um, some manly power um, but yeah it, it took a while to get this off but don't worry it's it's all smooth back here um, so it just it kind of you know that rubber it's been on there for like 40 years uh, so it's gonna take some time to pull that thing off but go ahead and pull that thing off. You can put your insulator, a uh, little ring, uh, plasticky bit there. And by the way, I'll go ahead and put a part number and a link uh, for this little insulator guy down in the description below. Um, but yeah, so anyhow, that is pretty much how we went ahead and solved that problem. And spoiler alert, I already hooked all this stuff back up this afternoon and the horn works now, so that was the problem. Uh, so let's go ahead and hook everything back up now. Um, I just need to go ahead and put on the steering wheel and kind of all the little bits and pieces, and then we will go from this, and uh, yeah, and then I will go ahead and sound the horn uh, for the first time actually working properly, and we can consider this job done for good, hopefully. Something's bound to pop up, like five years from now or less, this thing's just gonna start going off in the middle of the night. Oh, and by the way, when I put this little guy back on, I just used some channel locks, uh, let's see, like this right here, like so, and I went ahead and this kind of clamp down on both of these ends to help tighten it up. It's not quite as good as it was originally. Um, I'm doing this one hand, not really though. Um, but yeah, it's not as good as it was originally, but it's definitely not going anywhere. So I feel confident about it. Um, and that's really just there. So this thing doesn't totally just like collide into my uh, nice little uh, indicator uh, arm there. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the stuff back together like I said a minute ago. And before I install the nut that actually holds the steering wheel tight on the steering column, I wanted to point out, do you notice this notch right there? You know, can you guys really see that too well? Let's just focus a little bit. Yeah, so see that notch right here? See that? It's focusing. It's not focusing, but you guys can kind of see it. There's a notch there. See that little mark right there on the steering wheel? Zoom out. See those two? Okay. So from the factory, those things supposedly, if they line up, this steering wheel will run true and it'll run straight with the wheels. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that um, because you guys will remember, I think I've commented on it before, um, but when I, before I did all this stuff and I was driving the car around, uh, this steering wheel was, or the other steering wheel was not on straight. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of just follow these two lines and line up and install like so. And uh, hopefully it'll actually run true now as we drive down the road. So we'll see. And if not, then I'll just go ahead and come back to this step later on someday and straighten it back up and do a little correction. Okay, so the steering wheel nut is on nice and tight. We went ahead and dropped uh, this guy in like so. See, that is the telescopic lock unlock. Um, it kind of works as like a big nut thing. So you drop that in here. And then this guy right here is gonna go ahead and get threaded on to the, the threads inside of the steering wheel. Um, lock nut and pretty much you're gonna twist this really nice and tight and you're gonna keep twisting it until uh, you can no longer move the steering wheel uh, telescopic in and out. Uh, when you've done that then you will position this little arm guy all the way to the right um, and then you'll go ahead and use the little screws that came with this thing and kind of uh, lock it into place onto this plate. Okay, so yeah, I went ahead and tightened up these three uh, little screws here. So now when you have the lever all the way over here and you wanna go ahead and telescope in and out, you move it all the way to the left. And then when you have it in the position you're wanting, uh, you can just go ahead and move it all the way to the right and it is nice and tight and it will not move up and down in the column anymore. Um, however, I do wanna warn you guys, uh, when going ahead and tightening these screws here, um, I actually was using a little mini ratchet guy here, um, but I actually stripped out, you can see this one head is bigger than the other. Uh, this plate actually strips out really easy, uh, probably easier than a runaway on the wrong side of the tracks, but yeah, ha ha ha, I'm being funny. 
Um, but I went ahead and uh, just decided to use a socket, but just tighten it by hand. And that's gonna make sure you guys don't strip it out too easily. Um, but yeah, so now everything works perfectly fine as far as the telescopic was concerned. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I think the next step, let me look around at the parts. You can see my little accumulation of bits, tools, and whatnot. Um, I think we can go ahead and install the uh, horn pad now. So all I'm gonna do is stick the horn pad up here along with, you can actually see everything sitting on the dash. I know, bad, bad me, uh, putting things on the nice vinyl there. But yeah, so see the wood piece kind of sits there. And then this little horn pad here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and install this guy into that hole right there, noting that on the black plastic there, you can kind of see, Right there. Um, so that little uh, knobby bobber there, it's not really focusing, but you just got to trust me, is going to go in that little notch of the plastic there. So you'll twist it in or push in and then twist kind of like um, a festoon bulb, uh, which a lot of cars have. Um, the bulbs that kind of have the round base and there's two little knobs on the end. You push it into the socket and then twist and it, that little notch holds it into place. That's how that works, except it's just one notch. So you're going to go ahead and hook up that connection into that hole and then the two screws screws that go, where did they go? Here they are on the floor. Uh, these screws, there's two of them. They're gonna go back here and kind of stick through. Okay, better hand placement. Um, but yeah, so that little screw on both sides there, and then they will attach the horn pad via these two little, kind of, kind of like little screw pedestals, if you will, kind of jutting out from the back of the horn pad. So it'll screw in there, and that will clamp that little piece of wood trim, plasticky wood trim, um, onto there. And then we can consider this project done because, spoiler alert, if you watched the whole video, I already said that I tested the horn out and this worked. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. And then of course we're gonna do a little, a little horn solo, if you will. Um, and then yeah, we will kind of just wrap this up real quick. So I'm almost there. All right, guys, the moment we've been waiting for. I have everything hooked back up now. The steering wheel looks perfect, by the way. You guys like the mustard and uh, ketchup kind of theme going on? It's uh, very American. It's hot dogs. That's American. God damn it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just hook up the battery real quick. And let's give this thing a big horn. Chloe's a little horny. And uh, let's go ahead and see how she sounds. And if you can't tell, I've been imbibing a little bit. Our little secret. I'm just kidding. Well, whatever. YouTube, no, no drinking. Um, but before I sound the horn, real quick, look at that sun. Can you guys, oh, that looks really shitty on this camera. Uh, that's what happens when you've got a bunch of wildfires in California. Our sun becomes a big glowing orange blob in the sky. Uh, it's been looking like that now for, God, probably almost two weeks now. Um, but anyhow, uh, kind of putting more important issues in the background. Let's get back to this car that's really important. Um, and I'm joking, by the way. I actually, uh, I do have relatives up in the fire area, and uh, uh, honestly, it's really scary up there. They are containing it a little bit more, um, but yeah, I really shouldn't be joking about that because it is really serious. Um, and, you know, anyone, if anyone's watching that lives up there, uh, I really do wish you guys the best of luck, um, and I just hope that you guys are safe. Um, it is pretty scary. Um, so I shouldn't be joking about the sun, but it's actually quite pretty, um, although uh, really orange and uh, really undefined. But anyhow, are we ready for the horn? I literally have one minute left to record things because I'm out of space. So ready? Three, two, one. It sounds like a train. But yeah, so that is the horn. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to say goodbye, guys. Well, I have to say, I feel very accomplished figuring this out because, you know, I can mess around with stuff that I can at least kind of comprehend, but electrical is definitely not my specialty, and I'm really a visual person, so if I can see all the wiring or whatever I'm working on, and I can kind of trace things around, uh, that makes sense to me. The steering column did not make a lot of sense to me, because I really still didn't quite, now I understand how the whole circuitry works. Um, but I really didn't understand how any of this electrical stuff as far as the horn worked in this car or any car, to be honest with you. So this is, good. This is actually, this is the reason why I bought a car like this, a project car, because I learned something. And kind of getting back to why I make videos, I hope you guys learned something. But yeah, I think this has definitely been a very worthwhile purchase, this car. Uh, that's why I bought it, was to learn how to just fix anything. And this thing has been popping up a lot of little issues. Thankfully, not expensive issues. And that's really um, something else for you guys to kind of watch 
watch. I know probably a lot of people watching this video are probably on the older side, and that's okay. Um, I'm hoping that this is helpful for you guys, too. And if it is, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. I would appreciate it, by the way. Um, and subscribe to the channel, One Brain, Four Wheels. Just kind of put that out there. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, also for younger kids that don't have a lot of money, uh, I know this might not be the car for you guys, um, but if you are watching and you want to buy an older vehicle, it doesn't even have to be like a car like this, like a big 70s Cadillac. I know that's really not the rage for like a 16 year old. Uh, but even if you're working on like an older truck, like an 80s truck, or I mean, honestly, it's probably applicable to anything uh, without airbags, um, at least is very applicable. And I'm sure things can be taken away from this for really any vehicle. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get off that little soapbox there. And uh, really, I just wanna thank you guys for sticking around. If you watched the whole video, then I hope you learned something. And if you wanna see more little projects like this, um, either with the 77 Eldorado like you saw today, or just doing things on my 2003 Suburban, or my 2016 Corvette Stingray, I think that's what really draws in most people to my channel. But if you wanna see things, or uh, right there, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, um, that's my mom's car, but it was mine a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago, a couple years ago, um, before I bought the Corvette. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more projects like that or on those vehicles, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, One Brain, Four Wheels. I would really appreciate it. Um, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I don't know if I'm going to get there anytime soon, but you know, every little subscriber helps along that way. Uh, so I would appreciate it. And giving this video a big thumbs up if you found it helpful would really help me because it puts the videos in the search or higher up in the search algorithms or whatever uh, so I can get more views and kind of attract more people. And also it allows me to help more people because then they'll actually see the video and be able to watch it when they're searching for something that's applicable to what the video I made. Um, but with that, I think I'm gonna let you guys go and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate the support. I think we're at like 400, mid 400s right now on subscriber count. Uh, so I am very happy with that and very happy just with the support you guys have been showing me. Uh, so here's the next video, guys. Thanks.